All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and I'm here today to talk about URL shorteners, more specifically using them on YouTube because they're super duper convenient and why you'd use them, when you'd use them, and how they could help you for things like social media, for, you know, showing people the type of traffic that you get on your links, and in general, just understanding how and when people are clicking on things on your social media posts, on your YouTube descriptions, on your like comments, whatever, wherever. This is just a helpful tool to let you know if the information you're sharing with people is actually getting clicked. So I use Bitly a lot and Bitly is one of the older URL shortening tools. There's one from Google, there's one here. There's like a zillion of them. They're not exactly a complicated piece of software. They just take a URL, they they compress it into a small little URL with just some garbled numbers or a custom one if you want, and then you can copy that and paste that and it doesn't take up four pages worth of space, especially important if you're copying stuff off of like a, a web domain and it takes like a bazillion zeros to try to get the whole link on a page. And they're free, this one's free, I haven't paid for this one pretty much ever. You just log in and then you can create stuff either through this button here or through this widget that allows you to just through the plugin on my browser, just whatever I'm viewing right now, whatever website I'm on, I can click it and make that into a short link. And so why is this an important tool? Well, Bitly is great because it lets you turn a gigantic long URL like this. When I'm trying to show people a capture card and it compresses it down into something that is very tiny compared. You can see that right here. And it also lets you know what exactly people are clicking on. Like, are they going to your video to see a review for a product they're looking to buy? Thus, they wouldn't need to click on it, as is the case with the Flint 4K Plus video card. Or are they potentially looking for software and then by your recommendation and seeing how it works, then they'll go and check it out, which is the case with VTube Maker. It's just interesting to know what people are clicking on, what sort of tools they really want and they really want to use, like being able to put emojis on their Discord posts, and which ones maybe they don't use as much. Like maybe they already know that they want this product and they go to your channel for that, or maybe they're seeing if they want to use it, and if they really do, then they grab it from your channel post, or in this case, I gave people a free template for a Game Boy inspired overlay for Twitch that was animated. 900 people decided to download it because it was free. So this gives you an idea of who's clicking what and why. Over 90,000 people decided to download RhythmBot after checking out my video. Over 78,000 people decided to download the driver for the DS4 Windows thing. This is important things to know, both what, where, and why, and it helps you kind of figure out too what bits of software, in my case as a tutorial maker, might be interesting to create so that people can actually engage with it, view the video, and find some sort of value or use for it. So in my example here today, I'm going to link something into this video because it might be important for people who want to use Steam or haven't used Steam in a while to have a link in the description to go right to their website and download the Steam Games Store client. Because this is how to add non-Steam games to your Steam library so you can use their overlay. So to do that with a, with a URL shortener, I would just log in here and I would just copy it and go to the website and click create. And I could paste it in here. Or because I've got the plugin, I can just click on the plugin and I can just, the title can just be whatever, and I'll make a custom link, Steam uh, website, and I can hit enter. Oh, I think this is probably already in use right now, which means I can't really use that. So let's just say Steam client site, and let's hit enter. And there, that worked, so we can hit copy, and then I can go over to my video details and I can just go underneath of here. I 
And I'll just post this here and I'll say, download Steam here. And now if anyone wants this client, if they don't already have it, they can download it. Now in all likelihood, this link is probably not going to get clicked a lot. How do I know? Because if you come to this video looking for this information, it means that you probably already have Steam downloaded and installed on your computer. So it's very unlikely that anyone's going to click on this link in order to download the Steam client. If they do, great, I have this here if they wanna find the website directly without having to search for it. And it only took me five seconds to put it together because I've used these URL shortening tools before. And that's just another good example of why it's nice to have. People, if they want that information, they can go to the video description, click on the button and use it. Does everybody use it? No, is it good to have it? In my opinion, yes. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has just been a brief look at URL shorteners and how they can help both your YouTube posts and your social media posts. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.